about time, too. This is a 1981 Back to the Future DeLorean. Up comes the wing. There's my white jacket in there. Let's put this on so I can drive the car with the right gear on. And now here's the most important piece of kit on the car, the Mr. Fusion nuclear reactor. And that is powered by fuel, which is actually old vegetables and dud, garbage, rubbish. Amazing. Inside here is the other vital thing in the car, which is the flux capacitor. Now this flux capacitor is the thing that, when it's powered by the nuclear energy, it pushes the car through the sound barrier. Flux capacitor, yes, flashing away there. Plutonium chamber, yeah, that'll do. Right, here we go. Sorry. It's Peter Snow. Why can't he just use a folding bike like everyone else? No power steering on this thing. That is agreement to take further limited action against South Africa. The future. So this is the anniversary of Back to the Future. But by now, if the film was right, we should have had flying cars, hoverboards, and engines powered by rubbish. It hasn't quite turned out like that. Forecasting technology is, like almost any forecasting, extremely difficult. But it actually is somewhat easier than forecasting society. So for example, we have forecasts of Arthur C. Clarke, the famous scientist and science fiction writer in the early 1960s, in which Clarke effectively forecasts the internet. He says, uh, we will have computers in all our rooms and they will all be interconnected all the way around the world, which is a pretty amazing forecast. Woo -hoo -hoo, that was exciting. Professor, quick, jump in, we've got company. I think we're being chased. Are we? Yeah, but we are being chased. Look at that green van. What? There's a terrorist in there, Nicole. Now, how exciting is the future for the kind of materials that we use in this car? I mean, it's extremely exciting because we now have open doors to working on nanomaterials with all the new technology and characterization. Nanomaterials, explain nanomaterials, very, very so thin materials. Nanomaterials are ultra, ultra small materials that you can't see with your eye. What you need to have to power a, a car like this one, very fast release of energy, and supercapacitors is one of these type of applications Supercapacitors, there's a lot of hope in nanomaterials because supercapacitors require high surface, ener en uh, high surface areas, fast release of energy, and this is what these nanomaterials could potentially deliver. I can't go 88 miles an hour because the BBC Health and Safety forbid that. They've managed to fix it so this car will go through the time barrier at 33 miles an hour. So here we go. Okay. 31, 32, 33, we're off. <laughs> Matt, how good do you think we are at predicting the future? I think people are terrible at forecasting the future on the whole. Uh, and experts are worse than laymen, actually. If you, if you take a bunch of ordinary people and ask them what economic growth is going to be in the next five years, they're usually better than economists. Uh, are you on the whole optimistic about the way things will go in the future? Things keep turning out an awful lot better than we expect. Uh, so, for example, you know, World Bank announced last week that the extreme poverty in the world is now down to 10%. Uh, it was 60% when I was born. You know, that's an incredible change. We're seeing the most magnificent improvements in, in, in human living standards. And that's because of innovation. It's because of technology, but it's also because of changes in the way we live. Uh, and there's every reason to think that process is continuing. I might just drop this off for you. Great Scott, why am I meant to play that? I trust this place will still be here when I get back. 